guys, what's up? Welcome back. So we're going to have a little bit of a change of pace today, but I wanted to talk about something that's uh, kind of a serious thing, and I know you guys take very seriously, uh, horsepower. So today I want to talk about horsepower, not necessarily how to make it, how to sustain it, or anything like that. I want to talk about what horsepower is, where it comes from, how it's calculated, and a little bit of the history on it. So let's get started. Guys, and if you don't know already, 821 Bravo, that's the channel, that's me. I'd love to invite you guys to subscribe if you haven't already. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and no pressure, but do it and you're cool. So what exactly is horsepower? Horsepower is actually a calculation. So horsepower is a calculation of torque multiplied by RPM divided by 5252. Now, what does this all mean, and where do you get this number from? I moved our calculation up here just so you guys can always see it to reference it. Uh, so torque, what is torque? I'm just going to, uh, we'll do that, we'll do a little tornado, a little twister so you guys know that it's a measurement of twisting force. I'm sure you guys probably already know that if you're watching this. Uh, but torque is a measurement of rotational force or twisting force. RPM, you're another measurement you're probably very familiar with. Uh, revolutions per minute, this is basically uh, speed. So. Some of you guys are probably very familiar with speed, the kind that you do in your car and the kind that you did in high school. And 5252, what is this? This is where the magic happens. 5252, what exactly is this? So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to call this a constant. And that is something that's always going to remain constant, and I'll show you where that calculation comes from. Right. So this is going to kind of get us back into the horse business. Back in the day, I think the day might have been a Wednesday, uh, the year 1775, a guy named James Watt was developing the steam engine. So in order to promote his product, he needed a way to quantify or measure uh, how efficient his machine was. At the time, people are using horses to do everything, so he needed a way to quantify how well this machine performed compared to what they were used to. So he developed a way to measure horsepower derived from using horses. Weird. James Watt found that a powerful horse or a strong horse, healthy horse, could move 150 pounds, 220 feet in one minute. So let's look at that. 150 pounds, 220 feet in one minute. He could raise 150 pounds, 220 feet in one minute. And this same measurement is also commonly expressed as 550 pounds, one foot in one second. So one foot, one second. So if you take both of these, 550 pounds, one foot, one second, multiplied by 60 seconds, you get 33,000 foot pounds, basically multiplying 550 pounds, one foot, one second, by 60 seconds, you get 33,000 foot pounds. Same as if you take 220 multiplied by 150, 150 pounds multiplied by 220 feet in that same minute, you get 33,000 foot pounds. All right, so since a steam engine doesn't make uh, linear power as a horse would when you're using a horse to pull something. It makes rotational power. You need a way to convert that linear distance into rotational power. So here's uh, an illustration, and I'm gonna use this to explain it. Here's our horse lifting 150 pounds, 220 feet in one minute. So in order to convert this linear distance that this 220 feet is, we're going to use a one foot radius circle to measure the linear distance. Now the reason that we're going to use a one foot radius circle is related to torque. So torque is measured at one foot from a pivot point, which is where you get foot pounds from. So this is a one foot radius circle, meaning that it's two feet in diameter. So we need to figure out the circumference or the distance around this circle to equate that to the linear distance that this is traveling right here. So the circumference is diameter times pi. So the diameter all the way across 
times 3.14. So we're going to take 2 feet multiplied by 3.14, and that is going to give us our circumference of this circle. So the total distance around this circle here is going to be 6, 6.28. It's going to be roughly 6.28. So next thing we need to do here is take this linear distance, the linear distance that this weight is traveling up, and turn that into how many revolutions per minute this thing is going to take. So we have a 150 pound weight moving 220 feet in one minute. So what we're trying to figure out here is how many times does this circle rotate in that same one minute. So if we have this distance, we're going to take 220 feet, divide it by 6.28, and that's going to give us roughly 35 RPM. To summarize, all right, when we lift this 150 pound weight 220 feet, this wheel is going to rotate 35 times in that same one minute that this weight is going to move this distance. So now we have a measurement of rotational distance. So we're almost done. Bear with me. So now that we know the amount of force or weight is being lifted, multiplied by the revolutions per minute, divided by the number of horses, one horse, 150, multiplied by 35 RPM divided by one horsepower. One horse is powering this. One horse. What do you come up with? So this calculation directly is going to be about 5250. The actual is at about 52 or 3501. So Basically, this 150 pounds of force multiplied by 35 revolutions per minute divided by one horse doing this exercise is where you get your 5252 from. And that's going to be your constant based on this weight, which was identified years ago by James Watt, and one horse. This formula here might seem kind of like a lot of craziness and just a bunch of whole bunch of weird numbers, um, but the things that James Watt did and the way that uh, he set this up and advertised it and used it to distribute his product is how we got the almost universally known horsepower rating. So this is what happened in 1775. Some guy grabbed the horse, started measuring some stuff, came up with all this, used it to sell his idea, and now it's a universally known uh, measurement for power. All right, guys, and the last little piece of the puzzle here some of you probably already know this, and some of this, this is absolutely going to blow your mind. It blew mine when I realized it at first. All right, so since torque is something that is directly measured, and RPM is something that is directly measured, and horsepower is a calculation, you'll always see your torque curve and horsepower curve cross on a dyno sheet at 5,252 RPMs. Some of you may have noticed that before, some it may be brand new, but think about it, look at it, check out some dyno sheets. They cross at 5252 every time because math. As you're going through the torque curve, assuming that your torque is staying the same at 300 foot-pounds, as you increase in RPM, your horsepower is going to go from lower than your torque to higher than your torque based on this calculation. So if you take 300 pounds, foot-pounds torque, multiplied by 5251 RPM, divided by 5252, your horsepower is still going to be lower than your torque. 300 multiplied by 5252, divided by 5252, your horsepower and torque are going to be the exact same, and you go 1 RPM higher, 300 multiplied by 5253, divided by 5252. Now your horsepower just became a little bit higher than your torque because of this calculation. Now you're dividing by a little bit less than 
your RPM. So that's why your horsepower is crossing above your torque curve at 52.52 every time because of math. All right, guys, so that's about it. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Pedal to the metal, horse in the stable. See you next time.